How's it going guys? Welcome to the first episode of my new franchise mode series, 2020 Cup or Bust. So pretty self-explanatory, the goal for this series is to win the Stanley Cup by 2020. Uh, if we're successful, we actually get to open a special pack. For this episode, it'll be a 100k pack. If we're unsuccessful, if we bust, we have to quick sell the 100k pack. My plan is to have a bunch of different stuff on the line for every episode, so could be packs, could be forfeits. Uh, if you guys have any ideas, definitely let me know in the comments section. And obviously, for this episode, we're going to be playing as the Anaheim Ducks. But first off, guys, I wanted to show you some new things I've done for this franchise mode, just to make it a bit more realistic. So, decided to add some players as well as change some player ratings to hopefully make it as authentic as possible. So, starting off here, we have Brady Kachuk, obviously going to be a top five pick in this year's draft. 18 years old, 74 overall, he's got medium league potential. Next up here, we have Cole Clawfield, uh, 16 years old, 70 overall with medium top six. He's going to be available in the 2019 draft, should be a top 10 pick. Uh, next year we have Kale McCarr, obviously on the Colorado Avalanche. If we're playing as Colorado, we definitely need him on our team uh, to help us win that cup. And if not, he's still, you know, available to trade for and just, you know, make Colorado better in the future. I feel like not having them on their team uh, definitely makes it unrealistic. Same goes for this guy here, Casey Middles on the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, just like McCarr, both 18 years old, both 72 overall, and both have medium league potential. I thought that was pretty fair. Try to do my best to make the ratings and potentials as realistic as possible. Um, hopefully you guys think I did an okay job. Uh, next up here we have Eli Tolvanen, uh, 75 overall, finished winger there for the National Predators. He has low leap potential. I figured already playing in the KHL and doing pretty well, he should be higher rated, but he was a late first round pick, so low leap probably makes a bit more sense. He actually could be added to the game within the next month or two. Uh, apparently when the KHL season's over, he might be coming to join the Predators this season. Uh, now obviously that's not confirmed yet, so there's a chance we have to wait till NHL 19 to use him, so we'll see I guess how close I was with his rating and potential once he's finally added to this game. And next up here we actually have Ilya Kolvachuk. If you guys watch my NHL Olympics video, you'll know I already added both him and Dasik to the game uh, for Team Russia. 34 years old now, but still pretty good player. Uh, was actually the KHL leading scorer, so I have him as an 84 overall sniper there. Uh, leap potential, although it doesn't really matter because his potential is kind of gone, but should like keep his rating even though he's older. Obviously very good offensive stats there, puck skills and shooting. Still decent for skating, not as fast as he used to be. Physical and defense is definitely like his weak side. And if you guys haven't heard yet, he actually plans on joining the NHL for next season. He's going to be a UFA this summer. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to make him a UFA only in 2018. So he's going to be a UFA right off the start of franchise mode. So that is, you know, a little unrealistic there, but it's more realistic, I think, than not having him there. So we'll just have to pretend like he became a UFA one year early. So that should be really interesting to see who signs him. I know for this franchise mode as the Anaheim Ducks, I'm definitely going to be trying to sign him. Would love to have him in the top six. Uh, next up here, we have Joel Farabee. Uh, pretty solid winger there. 17 years old, 66 overall. Top six potential. He'll actually be a top prospect in the 2019 draft. Uh, Jack Hughes, he's supposed to go first overall in 2019. So as you can see, 76 overall off the get-go. He actually has high leap potential there. And I believe too that these players that are going to get drafted like a year or two from now might actually grow while we're playing the franchise mode. Not positive on that. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. But I did my best, you know, hopefully the ratings and potentials work out either way. Uh, I guess it'll be fair because, you know, every every team has an equal chance at them. Uh, Capo Caco here, another top prospect for 2019. He's going to go top three, maybe top five. I uh, love his name too, Capo Caco. So much fun to say. Uh, finished sniper there. I'm not sure if he's as good of a sniper as Liney, but, you know, reading up on him, that definitely is who he reminded me of. Uh, next up here, we have Oliver Wallstrom. Uh, he's like the shootout phenom from back when he was 10 years old or whatever. 17 years old, 68 overall. He's actually a good player in his own right now. I uh, gave him high top six potential. He'll be getting drafted in 2019. And then finally here we have Quentin Hughes, obviously Michigan boy, 17 years old, 68 overall, medium league potential. Um, definitely reminds me of like Zach Rowenski a few years ago. Both played for Michigan, both are projected top 10. Rowenski was able to make an immediate impact in the NHL and I think Quentin Hughes could do the same. So there's just a look at all the added players. Also guys, on top of all those new players, I decided to go and increase a bunch of potentials for prospects in both the 2018 and 2019 draft. Uh, there's like a bunch of prospects that are projected to go in the first round of 2018 that still have AHL potential. There's guys that are projected to go like top 10 in 2019 that also have AHL potential. So I didn't change any of the ratings, but I tried to make it as realistic as possible. Uh, guys that are projected top 5 have elite. You know, then top 10 to 15 is like top 6-ish. 
and then if they're first round they have at least you know top nine potential or if they're like a first or second whatever top nine potential and then like low top 4d or low top 60 uh, stuff like that. I also increased the potential for some prospects that have already been drafted. Uh, guys that are tearing up the CHL right now or had really good World Juniors. So uh, someone like Cairo, for example, I think he had medium bottom six, which made no sense. So I bumped that to medium top six. Only a few guys I did that for who I felt really deserved it. But here you go, guys. Starting the franchise mode finally. Anaheim Ducks here. Top players. Gets love Lindholm or Kel. So obviously Anaheim's pretty much already built to be a cup contending team. I think I only have to make a few tweaks here and we should be good to go. Um, as you can see there, 90 overall is actually tied for the highest in the Pacific Division. Uh, I'm going to actually change the settings here. So everything's going to be turned off except for salary cap, waivers, and computer trades. All the owner mode stuff uh, I do not want to have on. And then for the league settings here, it's going to be the same for every single video. So I figure I'll show you guys right now this one time and that'll be it. So game styles, 4-4, four four, full sim. Injuries is going to be off just to make it more realistic. We have a three-year period to try and win. Um, I don't want it to be like, you know, luck of the draw. If our goalie starting goaltender goes down in the playoffs, and then we have no chance. Uh, franchise mode length. I mean, it's only going to be three years. We'll put it five there. Computer trades, obviously, on. Difficulty, superstar. Draft pick ownership, authentic. Um, salary cap, on. Trade difficulty, hard. Waivers, on. And then relocation, we will have off. Also, guys, on top of this, I actually have a few rules of my own just to make it a bit more realistic. I know people are always saying how my trades aren't realistic and stuff like that. So hopefully this will make it as real as possible since that seems to be what you guys want. So the first rule is technically not a rule, but I have written down here unlimited free agency signing. So I was thinking about putting a limit on it, but I decided that might just limit it a bit too much. Some years you might only have two or other years you might have like seven or eight if you decided to just let a bunch of guys walk. So I decided to leave that unlimited. I think that's pretty fair. The next rule is that you can only make a maximum of five trades per year but computer trade offers do not count. So you can make five trades and then accept like five computer trade offers. Uh, you're still fine. I figured uh, that's pretty fair and pretty realistic, hopefully. And then going on with the trades, uh, the third rule here is that you can't trade picks past 2020. So you can't be trading, you know, 2023 and 2024 picks. As well, you have to have a minimum of four picks per draft year. So that's 2018, 2019, and 2020. Uh, that way you're not leaving like your team completely dry for draft picks. Plus, no matter how much a team is going for it, I don't think they're ever going to completely trade away every single pick for a draft year. So those are the rules, guys. Now I think it's time we finally get started. So right here, guys, look at the Ducks roster. We got Raquel, Getzlav, and Perry on the first line. Silverberg, Kessler, Ease on the second. Uh, Cogliano, Henrique, Richie on the third. And then Case, Vermette, and Chimera on the fourth. Defense here, obviously pretty solid. Lindholm, Manson, top pair. Montour, Fowler, second pair. And then Boschman and Bieksa on the bottom pair. In goal, we got Gibson starting. Good young goalie. Miller backing him up. So uh, goalie usually is a big uh, question mark for at least a lot of the teams in this league. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, forwards are honestly pretty solid. I would like to upgrade that second line left wing. I'm thinking Kovalchuk could be the perfect option. Also wouldn't mind adding one more winger uh, to say replace Richie, move him down to the fourth line. That would definitely be optimal. Uh, defense, I think, is probably fine as is. Like, we got a good young top four. And then both Boschman and BX on the bottom pair, even though they're old, that's fine for this first year. And in regards to the AHL team, they're really not that great. Um, only player that could help us in the future is probably Jacob Larson. 20 years old, 76 overall. Uh, lowly potential. Maybe as quick as next year, he could be on the team, which would be huge. Also, guys, I wanted to show you just the team's trade values here. Just to show you what we have to work with. Um, obviously, most of the players that are on this team don't want to trade as we are trying to win the cup as soon as possible. And I think this team can compete this year. Uh, even guys though, like Max Jones, Sam Steele, 19, mid-60s, uh, medium top 64 potential, and they're still playing in junior. So by next year, they could be like a mid to high 70. And I mean, they, at that point, they can help with the NHL team. So I really don't even want to trade them. Uh, Larson, again, is already 76. Um, Richie's in the NHL. Comtois, he's a guy I might trade because he's a 60 with low top 6. Uh, same with Moran, like they're probably too far out to actually help us here with the 2020 Cup, but you never know. Uh, you could always get lucky with them when they just have a huge potential boost. Um, but yeah, like it seems like we have a good amount of stuff to trade uh, for prospects. Draft picks here, we also still have all of our first round picks, which is awesome. Even have an extra third there from the Devils trade uh, with Henrique for Vatanen. And I mean, sometimes these teams, they trade away their first. So I'm glad we still have those first round picks to work with. I'm not sure if I'm going to trade them or not, as I know there's going to be some really good prospects in this year's draft. So even if we, you know, make the playoffs, we could always trade up. Uh, if there's somebody that's worth a first round pick, though, I'll definitely make that trade. And like I was saying, guys, first thing I want to do here is try and sign Kovalchuk. So uh, he's actually got top six for potential. It must be because I gave him low elite or just because he's older. I'm not sure. Uh, he wants 2.9. Maybe another team makes a bid on him. So we'll offer 3 million there for one year. 
Uh, hopefully he says yes to that. And right now, guys, we're trying to acquire another top six winger. This one is David Perron. He's actually on the block for the Vegas Golden Knights. Obviously, solid winger, 29 years old, 83 overall. Considered a second line forward. Offering them Patrick Eves. As he's making $3 million, he's only 81 overall. I feel like that's a bit too much money for an 81 overall winger, especially one that's 33 years old with top 9 for potential. Uh, there's a good chance he starts to regress, so I'd rather get rid of that contract while I still can. Add the second round pick, gives us a lot more flexibility and the better player in Perron. I think it's a good deal, should go through equal on both sides, and they say yes. So if Kovalchuk signs as well, uh, we're pretty much set for this year already. And as you guys can see here, Kovalchuk accepted our offer, which is awesome, so uh, we're going to go take a look at the lines now. Uh, they should be absolutely stacked with both uh, Kovalchuk and Perron now in the top six. So here's a look at the team guys after the big trade and signing. Raquel Getzlav Perry is still the first line. New improved second line though with Perron, Kessler, and Kovalchuk. Third line there, Cogliano, Henrique, and Silverberg. And then fourth line there of Case, Vermette, and Richie. So I really like the lines there. We have a ton of depth. This team should be a Stanley Cup team. Uh, we'll have to see what the simulation decides. Just got this huge trade offer from the Flames, offering me Backlund and two-fourths for a first and second in 2019. Uh, I don't really think I want to do this, though, as Backlund already has his extension. He's going to get more money. Uh, he does have one year left of 3.5, but then I believe he's getting extended. He is solid there, 84 overall. We were kind of already good down the middle. Getzlav, Kessler, Henrique. I think we could get more for the first round pick, so I'm going to say no to this. Also, as you can see there, we were actually 10-9-2 right now in November. We were crushing it. I think we were like 8-2. and two. Then we had a 7-game losing streak, so uh, we'll see what happens here as we head towards the trade deadline. I just got another big trade offer. This one's from the Detroit Red Wings. Couple weeks before the trade deadline, offering me Mike Green in a 6th round pick for a 2nd and a 3rd. That actually seems like really good value. I'm not sure how it would work, though, for like the salary cap. Uh, they're not retaining any salary, so I don't know if I'd have to drop somebody if it doesn't matter. Uh, with how it works out at the deadline. Let's see how good is he. Um, 82 overall, so he still would definitely be an upgrade for our bottom pair. Uh, I wonder if they would take back like Bieksa or Boschman just because without injuries on it doesn't matter. Plus, we just make sure we don't have to send anybody down. Uh, so Bieksa there is making 4 million for one more year, so yeah, we don't need him anyway. He's on the right side. So, what if I added Bieksa? I think they'd probably still do it, like, it really wouldn't affect them. Trade accepted. Okay, so there we go. Uh, that's another big trade for us. Uh, Mike Green's on the third pair now. Boschman's going to help the power play. Uh, we're going all in right now. And as you can see there, we're actually 31, 23, and 3 a couple weeks before the trade deadline. And now, guys, we're at the trade deadline with a record of 37, 24, and 3. So I'm assuming we have to be in a playoff spot. Really up and down season, honestly. Uh, we started out really good. I was showing you guys at one point we had like seven straight losses. Uh, we actually went on another losing streak, I think, right here in December. Uh, January, though, we started picking it up a bit. And so by February, actually, we we're kind of on a roll playing good hockey. Hopefully, we can keep this going here and uh, make the playoffs, especially after making that trade for Mike Green there. And as you can see, we're actually second place in the division with 77 points, only one point behind Zan Jose. Uh, Corey Perry there, our leading scorer, 57 points in 64 games. So I'm going to check the trading block now to see what's available. We still can make three trades, as we made two so far, as the Mike Green trade was offered to us from a computer. All right, guys, so I've seen that Arizona has Jarmelson on the block. Obviously, solid defenseman, 30 years old, 84 overall. Uh, pretty good contract, too, 4.2 million for the next two years. Offering them Boschman, who they want, and he'll be replacing, plus a 2020 first. Obviously, we aren't drafting in 2020. Um, but we could use it for another trade. I think this is a pretty smart trade. Our team is looking very good this year. Might as well go for it. The value is pretty even. Uh, maybe you know what I'll do. I'll add like a seventh round pick in 2018 just to sweeten the pot a bit. Hopefully, uh, you know, that'll make them say yes. So there we go. Value should be perfectly even now. What are they going to say? Trade rejected. Are you kidding me? All right, guys. So I just threw in a 2018 third as well. That should be enough to land Jarmelson. And it is. So there we go. Our defense now is stacked. I'm trying to make one more trade here. This one's actually not going to affect our team right now. It will help us in the future. Uh, five guys here want rid of their contract. Three guys have two years left. The other two, three years left. None of them are going to help us win the cup. Would much rather just like an open roster spot than this guy's contract. Asking Dallas for Chicago's fourth in return. I see they actually have 10 open contract spots. So maybe we'll say yes. There's a couple decent dudes in there. And uh, they do say yes, that's awesome. So here's a look at the team, guys, after the trade deadline. Obviously, the offense is still the same. Defense, though, is now stacked. Lindholm, Manson, still the top pair, with Green and Fowler on the second pair, and Dremelson and Montour on the third pair. Like, I don't know how any team's going to match up with that. Also, just notice, too, Gibson's now an 86. So that's a huge help. And like I was saying before, because the Green trade got offered to us, we actually could have made one more trade, but I feel like the team is solid as is. And rather than, like, you know, going all in this year, trading all my firsts, 
all my top prospects. I'd rather hold on to them, see what we get from them, and then maybe use them in a trade next year. Have like three chances at the cup every single year rather than just, you know, all my eggs in one basket this year. And like I said, I think this team's solid. Uh, we're going to sim the rest of the season here and uh, get into the playoffs. All right, so the regular season is now over. We finished the record of 45, 34, and 3. Uh, so 93 points. Hopefully that's enough for the playoffs. It should be. If it's not, uh, really unfortunate. And are you kidding me? We missed the playoffs. 93 points. I might have jinxed it at the trade deadline when I said getting ready for the playoffs. I thought we were like for sure thing in it. We were second in the division at that point. I cannot believe that. Wow. Uh, just kind of check these standings now. I, that is, uh, that is unfortunate. That is for sure. I am, uh, dumbfounded, honestly. 93 points, four shy there in our division. We'll see, uh, in the central, three shy of a central playoff spot. Wow. Carolina actually won the President's Trophy. That's kind of crazy. And we finished 16th in the NHL. That hurts even more. That means if we were in the East, we would have made the playoffs. As you can see there, Buffalo actually gets in with 90 points. Are you kidding me? I mean, as soon as I said to, like, uh, team looks good, getting ready for, like, gonna finish the regular season, get ready for the playoffs, that this is gonna happen. Uh, Perry there, though, solid year, 66 points. Raquel as well. Kovachuk, 59 points, his first year back in the NHL. Love seeing that. Perron also had a pretty good year for us. So, I mean, I don't know, everyone played well. Our team was so stacked, like, throughout. How did we not get this done? Makes no sense. Gibson had a solid year as well. Um, that's just, ah, uh, that's just shitty. And if you guys are wondering who led the league in scoring, Ovechkin here, 96 points, 56 of them were goals. Pavelski actually second, Stammer, Kane, Ben, Backstrom. Look at this, guys. The season's now over, and Colorado just won the first overall pick via Ottawa. I really wish they'd change it and give Colorado Ottawa's 2019 pick, because that's definitely what's going to happen. Um, Islanders there picking second, Philly third. Colorado also has a sixth, Detroit there is fifth. And as you can see, we are picking 15th. Uh, the best team to miss the playoffs, and of course, we did not move up. That definitely, definitely sucks. And look at retired players here, guys. We actually lost both Chimera and Chris Kelly, so wasn't going to bring either of them back anyway, so don't mind that. Uh, the draft's now a day away, but I figured before we get to the draft, we'll actually look at the awards for this year. Um, I already actually forgot who won the Stanley Cup. Um, I was going to say Pittsburgh. No, it was the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, Pittsburgh's AHL team, uh, Wilkes-Barre Scranton, actually won the Calder Cup, though, so... Take a quick look here at the awards. Jets with the Stanley Cup. We already know Carolina with the President's Trophy. Um, they play the Tampa Bay Lightning there. I mean, that could be the Stanley Cup final this year. Player awards here. Ovechkin, obviously, with the Art Ross and the Hart. Uh, Keith with James Norris. Pavelski, Lady Bing. Barzell there with the Calder. Uh, Hellebeck with the Con Smythe. Rene with the Vesna. Darlene actually won the William Jennings. I guess that makes sense. Carolina did win the President's Trophy. The Thought there. Bill Masterson. Stahl with the Selkie. Ovechkin with the Ted Lindsay, and then also with the Marines Richard. So Ovechkin cleaned up this year, but still, no Stanley Cup. Also, guys, here's a look at the playoff tree for this season. Uh, Winnipeg there went through Chicago, St. Louis, and then the Vegas Golden Knights, who they swept in the conference final before beating the Tampa Bay Lightning there in a best of seven. That sounds like a great series. We'd love to see that in real life. Uh, Tampa Bay there beats Pittsburgh first round. Then the Sabres, no idea how they made it. They actually swept uh, Boston. Then they beat Columbus there in the conference final. A uh, quick look here at the AHL playoff tree. I think we did make the playoffs. Yeah, we did, but we lost in the first round, unfortunately. So, uh, pretty good overall. Like I was saying, we're now going to get to the draft. Maybe we can, you know, trade up, get one of those top prospects. There's honestly like seven or eight in the draft. Uh, so, you never know. Maybe this is like a blessing in disguise. We'll be an even, even better team next year. Uh, let's get to the draft. Obviously, guys, we're not going to be able to trade for the first overall pick. So, I think it's pretty obvious who the Avs are going to take here. And as you can see there, they take Rasmus Dallin. You might notice a slight change. I decided to change him to medium franchise potential opposed to medium elite. Uh, make him, you know, just one step above uh, Sveshnikov, Zadina. Especially, too, he's being compared to, like, Carlson, Lidstrom. That sounds like a franchise defenseman to me. So, after the Avs kind of got screwed last year, uh, losing all three lottery picks, they get first overall this year with the Ottawa pick they got for Duchesne, and they get Rasmus Dallin. So, I'm sure they're happy. Um, honestly, I don't think I'll be able to trade for like one of the top five picks. I'm thinking maybe I can trade for the Av's second first round pick, the Canucks pick. So I'll probably wait until then to uh, try and make a move. As you guys can see here, we're actually just going to end up picking at number 15. I tried trading up with a few teams, but they wanted way too much, in my opinion, to move up. Uh, the last team I tried with was Florida. I wanted to get Wallstrom, offered them a third and a decent prospect along with our first. They said no, and it really just didn't make sense. So right there, guys, they look at some of the prospects. Uh, McDonald here, I think I boosted his potential. Uh, I think Wallstrom was like the last solid player. You can see he went 10th. Uh, Farabee actually went before him. Uh, Merkley there, medium elite. Same with Bachvis. Uh, Quentin Hughes, I kind of wanted him. Made an offer for Colorado, but they didn't, you know, go for it. Valino there went 5th to Detroit. Zadina to Arizona. Kachuk 
uh, to Philly. He was actually a 74, I think, when I made him. So it looks like they do grow um, during the sim. Uh, although the players that weren't like user created did not grow. Like uh, Zidane is already a 76 in game, same as Fetchnikov. So it's kind of strange how that works. Uh, Dallin's like already a 78 in the Swedish league. So uh, I'm not sure why the created players grow, but maybe that'll make it a bit more interesting. Anyways. Um, hopefully there's a solid player here at 15. I doubt they'll ever, you know, be on the roster and help us win that cup, but maybe we can include them in a trade, which will help us win the cup that way. So, um, I think there still should be, like, some medium top six, worst case scenario. Uh, Wu, I think's like, top four. Um, same with McIsaac as well. Um, Kovacs, I'm not exactly sure about, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I'm trying to see if I recognize some of these names. Sokolov, um, Axel Thomas, or Akil Thomas, I think he's... He's a top 9 or top 6 guy. Um, I think the safe pick is probably Wu. I'm pretty sure he has medium top 4 D. McIsaac might as well, but I know for sure Wu does. So I'll uh, we'll just do the safe pick here, take Wu. And yeah, medium top 4. It's not too bad. So just similar to our next pick, guys, was actually a 4th round pick. I figured I'd show you the rest of the rounds. I really messed up in not taking that Kovacs goalie. As you can see, medium lead potential. Uh, definitely would not have been able to use him, but could have used him uh, for a huge trade. Also, I forgot to Bouchard. I made him have high top 4D, and I forgot about that. So I guess it's fair, you know, changing the potentials for a bunch of players. Um, just right here as they look at the rest of the first round. Thomas did have uh, top 6 4 potential, but still, uh, top 4D, I think, you know, our pick was fine. Uh, we'll see if we can do anything here. Would love to get like a medium elite goalie. Like I said, even though we can't ever use him, uh, would be a huge trade piece. It looks like a low top 6 after you just got drafted before our pick. So uh, maybe I will take a goalie here just because. I feel like there's a better chance of finding like a goalie steal than a player steal. I could be wrong about that. I don't know why, but I feel like this tan guy might be good. Fringe star potential. You never know though. And he does have fringe star potential. Okay. Now as you can see there, Tampa actually got a low top six forward in the fourth round. Um, I think he's another guy whose potential I boosted. Basically, if they're projected to go like first or second round this year, I try to make like their potential match that projection. A lot of them had way too low potentials. So could go goalies back to back here. Actually, instead I'm gonna go with this Addison guy. I'm pretty sure he's got decent potential, especially for a fourth round pick. And yeah, low top 4D, that's not too bad. Uh, we actually have back to back picks, so I guess I'll take a goalie next. I'm gonna go with this Grabowski guy here. Hopefully he's good. Uh, medium fringe starter, okay. Next pick here, I'm gonna take this Kershev guy. I'm pretty sure he's got decent potential, at least for a fifth round pick. Never mind, high HL top six. That was better than that. And our last pick of the draft here is pick number three in the sixth round. I think I'm gonna try a goalie again. I guess I'll go with this Vic Kane guy here. Love the name. Uh, high league interest, medium fringe starter potential, so the highest projection. We'll see what he got. And he also has medium fringe starter. So we have three goalies now just like that. Uh, oh well. So we're now at the resign phase here, guys. We have 8.9 million in cap space. Uh, Vermette needs resign, but he's now a 77 at 35 years old. I'm just gonna let him go. Sam Steele though is a 75 now, so he could actually be good enough to play fourth line center potentially uh, by the time the next season rolls around. Uh, Kovalchuk does not want an extension. He's 85 now. I'm going to have to try. 5.9. That's actually kind of expensive. What's Perron want? 4.4 for four years. I don't know. I might have to let both of them go. I might be able to find somebody better in the free agency. Um, Richie obviously going to re-sign. Solid fourth line winger for us. Uh, let's see. I'd rather go for one year here and a cheap $1.2 million deal. I think that'd be better for us. I think next year, like, or this year coming up, could honestly be our year. Uh, right wingers here, Case, he needs a new contract. Uh, three years at 1.22, I think that's pretty fair. We'll give him, like, 25k shy. Uh, JT Brown, I like, you know, he's a streamer, but unfortunately, just don't think he's good enough to keep. Uh, defense here, obviously, our top four is locked up. Uh, Fowler just got a raise, actually. One that was already in the game. Uh, Mike Green here, not interested in an extension. 82 overall, wants 4.2. Not even worth it, especially with Larson coming up. Uh, Montour, obviously, we want to keep around. 3.9 for four years. He gets, uh, okay, we could do one year. He'll actually be pretty cheap. He didn't grow it all last year, so kind of want to make him, you know, prove to me that he's worth uh, the money, I guess. So one year at 2.3. I'm basically hoping that we can win it this year, getting guys on cheaper deals. Well, I'll work out, hopefully. 775k for that guy makes sense. I think that's it there for the D. Goalie, obviously, like I said, Gibson's an 86. One year left here at 2.3. That's another reason why we have to try and win right now because he's going to want a big raise, especially if he gets an upgrade this year. And are you guys looking at this year's free agency class? As you can see, Kovachuk's the top free agent there. He's actually asking for like a million more than before. He probably found out he was like the top free agent 
asking for 6.4. Uh, Pro wants 4.5, only like 0.2 more than he was asking for from me. And he's actually like the best winger there. Uh, that we can afford as we can't afford Kovacic or Neal. After that, it's like Camp, who's 82. We'd actually have to give up a pick for him, though, as he is an RFA still. Uh, low top 6'4 potential, so I mean, he might actually be worth signing. Get him cheaper than Perron, play him in the top, you know, 6, or even on the third line if he grows. Uh, that'd be really good as Perron's uh, 30, so he's not going to grow at all. I'm actually kind of interested in this. We do have our second, I believe, or actually, do we have our second? Uh, cost a first and a third. That is not worth doing. Never mind. Uh, maybe I just give an offer to Perron to see what he says. Give him exactly what he wants there for four years. If he says yes, awesome. If not, uh, we can probably make a trade or something. We're going to have to. I um, also guys want to show you just some uh, lower end signings I made, or offers I made, I should say. Kajula here, 78 overall. Uh, he is with Edmonton still, so we'll have to not match. Boucher there. Carrier, Samuelson, Gregor, Bitten, Brable U. He's actually like tearing up the Q right now. Um, let's see. I think there was one other player. Maybe not. Um, basically, after like letting go a bunch of contracts, trading as well as just not resigning guys, had to sign some people to play for the AHL. And then goalies here, we didn't have an AHL starter or backup, so we got Godley here to be our AHL starter, and then Hallen in there will be the backup. As you guys can see here, this Bitten guy accepted our offer. Same with Beret Bull U, Gregor, Hallen in. Um, right here, we have an offer from Florida. A first round pick, Addison, and a third for Dadnov. That's just not worth it, I don't think. Dadnov's pretty solid. I think he's like an 83. Maybe an 84? He's an 85. Okay. That's not bad, but uh, 2019 first. Addison's got low top 4D potential and a third for Dadanov. I mean, it would, we don't, doesn't take up a trade spot, which is good because they're offering it to me. Dadanov's solid. He's only making 4 million, which is pretty reasonable for an 85 overall player. First round pick, like we're, we're trying to win the Stanley Cup, so it shouldn't be a you know lottery pick. Addison we just got late in the fourth round, 2019 third. Um, maybe we do this trade. Actually, the only thing is, would, uh, 2019 third, would that put us below four picks this year? Um, it would. We'd only have three. So let's do a 2020 third instead. Although we guess we could trade for picks back, and that'd probably be fine. But, you know, just to keep it at a minimum of four picks. That seems like a pretty good offer. We get a winger. We act, you know, it's cheaper than Perron. We are giving up a first round pick for him, though. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Screw it. And they say yes, okay, I think that's a good trade. Just heard back from Perron, and as you can see, he rejected our offer. Obviously, we no longer could have afforded him after making that trade for Dadanov, but uh, whatever. Samuelson accepted, though. Uh, same with Boucher, Godla as well. Um, Kajula and Kurt Carrier both said that they would accept if their teams didn't match, so that's good to know. Plus, I don't know if I told you guys, but everyone like we made offers on um, that was already on our team, everyone accepted. Edmonton chose not to match, that's pretty awesome. I think Kajula's a solid fourth line forward, especially... Um, for that cheap of a price and he's still got potential like he's only 24 or whatever So I was looking at the training block guys. I noticed that LA had Kemp on the block um, Obviously he was in free agency. They couldn't you know agree to a contract Maybe if we trade for him, he'll actually sign for less value's not that high So I'm just offering Cal Olsen here. Uh, he'll probably never help us out really not that much value and then Kane one of their fringe starter potential goalies we drafted um, Together they're actually the same value. They don't want Kemp. So maybe they say yes to this and they say yes. I think that's a very solid trade. So at the end of the summer here, guys, I noticed I actually only have two AHL D-men. So just made offers on Weatherspoon and Poolman. Uh, both are 25, high 70s with medium top 6, which isn't too bad. Uh, Jordan Subban and also made an offer on. Same with that Gres Greslick guy. And I think we actually have enough space now we can sign Kemp. So 3.3 uh, million, he wants 2.5. I mean, maybe he'll take uh, 2.35, like every you know, dollar counts. He just wants to play hockey, I'm sure. So everyone we made offers to signed, and here's a look at the team going into next season. Uh, first line, here we have Raquel, Getzlav, Dadnov. Second line's Perry, Kessler, and Kemp. Uh, Perry's actually down to an 83 now from an 85. I know he's getting older, but really it makes no sense to me. If you guys forget, he had a really good season last year, was our leading scorer, 66 points, and he lost two overall. So I'm not sure how that works. Like, I feel that their performance should reflect their overall, you know, either boost or drop uh, more than it does right now. Uh, third line here we have Cogliano, Henrique, and Silverberg. So really solid third line. Same with the fourth line. Uh, Case, Steele, and Richie. Steele's actually a 79 now. Um, that's pretty awesome. Like he might be pushing for third line role really soon. Uh, defense is also very solid. Lindholm now in 88. Uh, just going all out there with the first pair. Fowler as well in the top pair. Uh, second pairing we have Montour and Jarmelson. Then third pair we have Larson now in the team with Manson. Uh, Manson played first pair all last year. Didn't grow at all. So he's on the third pair now helping Larson. I think that top pair 
should, you know, maybe get us more points. Just having our two best defensemen both on the same line. And then goalies now, Gibson's now an 88. So that could be a game changer, 88 goalie. Like, that is huge. Uh, he was an 85 to start last year, then became an 86. So um, hopefully, you know, this is the year for us. AHL team looks decent. Kajula's now in the AHL. We actually have pretty good amount of depth threat wings. So if we need to, like, replace somebody next season if we don't win the cup, we definitely have some options. Defense, obviously, I signed a bunch of guys goalies aren't too great but really I like the look of this team so I'm gonna start simming here and uh, hopefully better result than last season. Right now guys we're a few weeks away from the deadline having a pretty good season so far and the Blues offered me Bomeister, Schmaltz, and a fifth for Kemp and a third. Now our defense is already stacked and I'd rather not take on the extra salary so I'm gonna say no to this deal. All right guys we're now at the trade deadline and we are having an amazing season. I tried to like undersell it a few weeks ago. 41, 16, and 6, 88 points a day before the trade deadline. Like, if we can't make the playoffs this year, I have no idea. Um, just ridiculous how well this team is playing. Uh, lean score there is Dadanov, so I'm liking that trade. 50 points in 63 games. Currently first place in the division, 11 points up on the Oilers. So, you can check the trading block here. We can make four trades as we made one in the offseason. And uh, we'll see, I guess, what's out there. We really don't have that much cap room to work with, but... Uh, you never know. So right now, guys, we're trying to make a pretty big trade at this deadline. Uh, trading for Alex DeBrincat on the Blackhawks. Obviously, very solid player. 21 years old, 82 overall. Medium top six. A really good scorer. Uh, plus, he's actually making 800k for the next two years, which is the big reason why I want him. We're really close to the cap. Don't have to worry about him wanting to raise for the rest of this. Uh, Jeremy Wu was our first round pick this year's draft. And then Max Jones is a pretty solid prospect, but obviously... Combining the two of them to get to Brinkett, help out our top six. We don't have to worry about giving up any fun from our NHL team. I think that just makes us an even more contender. Like, we're already very good adding to Brinkett. That should just push us over the top. So we'll see what they say. The value's, like, way on our side. Here we go. Trade accepted. So I think we might have overpaid a little bit, but like I said, with the Brinkat cost controlled, I think it's worth it. So after the trade, here's a look at the team. First line is the exact same. Second line's now Perry, Kessler, and Brinkett. Uh, third line there, Kemp, Henrique, and Silverberg. And then fourth line's Richie, Steele, and Cogliano. So we just have so much forward depth, it's honestly ridiculous. Our team was already good. 41-16-6 uh, and six record. No reason we can't keep it up. Uh, let's hope for the best. So the regular season's now over. We finished with a record of 52-21-9. I feel like there's no way we didn't make the playoffs. I think that's 113 points, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, like, we probably have a very good chance of the President's Trophy as well. Uh, this team is absolutely stacked. Now we just have to hope for a good simulation. Uh, we did win the Presidents, or we won the Conference for sure. We'll take a look. We won the Presidents. Uh, Raquel there was actually our leading scorer. Take a look at all of our players to see how they did. So 113 points. That was good for the Conference. Uh, not good for the league. Wow. Pittsburgh beat us. Um, or I guess they have one game left. We're currently tied for points. And they have, yeah, more regulation overtime wins. So I thought maybe we had the Presidents this year, unfortunately. Uh, not quite good enough, but we will finish second at the very worst and first in the West, obviously, which is huge. Uh, we'll see here all the guys did this season. I was actually surprised to see Raquel as the leading scorer. Uh, Perry there, 59, even has an 83, so I feel like he should maybe go back up to an 84 or something. I don't know. Uh, Dadna, very solid with 58. Kessler, 55. He actually dropped one as well from an 85 to an 84. Uh, Getzlav dropped one from 89 to an 88. Still, though, put up 54 points. The Brinkett there, 52 points. That's not bad at all. Uh, Silverberg as well, 48, playing on the third line. That's really solid. Uh, he is on, like, a power play and four-man power play. Fowler, almost 50 as a D-man. Uh, Steele there, 36. His first year is not too bad. Uh, same with Kemp, putting up 36. Lindholm, Henrique. So, I mean, overall team definitely performed pretty well. Uh, we'll see also how Gibson did here. Expecting some pretty good numbers from him. 44, 16, and 8. Yeah, 7 shutouts, 0.935. 1.94 goals against. Uh, there's some crazy numbers. Also, I haven't been tracking the AHL team at all, but apparently they're killing it. Irving here is 42, 16, and 8 with 7 shutouts, 0.919, and a 2.1 goals against. Um, also, the skaters here, Boucher is almost a point per game. Same with Kajula. Uh, so, AHL team played really well. I mean, that's just a nice bonus. Like I said, I did not expect that. Uh, we'll see who the leading scores were for this year. Stamkos, 98. Kucherov, 95. So, that looks a lot like this year. Kessel there still killing it. Uh, same with Karazi and Malik, and I wonder if they were all in one line, that'd be crazy. Uh, McDavid there, of course, Tavares, he's still an Islander, he is. Uh, McKinnon, Kovalchuk put up 80 points to the Stars, jeez, that's insane. Uh, Sagan there, I guess they, they like the, uh, you know, Russians that returned to the NHL, they had Radulov, now Kovalchuk, Kane, Drew, Pashenak, Tarasenko, so, looks pretty good. So the first round of the playoffs, guys, we're going up against the National Predators, here's a look at their team. Forsberg, Johansson, Arvidsson, still the first line. Uh, Tolvanen, Turris, and Fiala there on the second Smith, Benino, Yarncroc on the third. Then they have Watson, Sissons, and Hartman on the fourth. 
defense here, Yossi, Subban, Emelin, Ekholm, Irwin, and Weber. So they trade away Ellis. Um, I was like, he wasn't in free agency. Goalie's there, Rene's the starter, Saros backing him up. So I mean, this is a pretty tough first round, I'm not going to lie. Uh, so I guess they finished 8th in the West, which is kind of insane. But I guess that's, is that what they finished last year and they went all the way to the Stanley Cup Final? It might have been. Uh, so hopefully we can uh, do good here. I'm just going to sim game by game. Uh, we'll do period by period for the Cup Final. Uh, so we went down 2 nothing. Luckily we pulled it back 2-2. 3-2 now. We need a win here in one of the next ones. Looks like the AHL team is moving on. We just have to win one of the next two games. There we go. So, uh, went down the first two games. Luckily, able to win four straight. Moving on to the semifinal. And in the semifinals, guys, we're matched up with the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, Tatar, Carlson, Marchesu is the top line for them. Smith, Halla, and Tuck on the second. Grabner, Eakin, and Calvert on the third with Belmare, Nash, and Grabowski actually on the fourth. Can't believe they re-signed Grabowski. Uh, Theodore, Miller, Garrison, Merrill, Spiza, McNabb's their top six. So, I mean, our D is definitely better. Uh, Flurry though, still an 89, 34 years old. Subban backed him up, an 83. I mean, they got a good team. I definitely would choose our team over theirs. They have like four 70s and forwards. Our defense definitely has some more talent. So uh, we'll see what happens here. Hopefully uh, we can make it by, get to the conference final. I think winning the Stanley Cup here would definitely make up for the unlucky uh, not making the playoffs last year. So down 1-0, tied it up 1-1, uh, down 2-1, down 3-1. Wow, so... Vegas Golden Knights there put us out in five games. That's incredible. And the draft lottery results just came in, guys. Chicago Blackhawks with the first overall pick, so they're getting Jack Hughes. That's hilarious. Buffalo, though, with the two and three, so we're going to go back to back. I mean, that was what the Vancouver Canucks did back when they dropped the two Sedins. Maybe Buffalo can make something happen. Arizona, four. Never lucky, so I'm guessing they finished last probably and just didn't win any of the lottery picks. Detroit, five. Um, Islanders there get 14 via New Jersey. They actually have a couple first rounders. I can't believe though, Chicago first overall, then Buffalo, a couple back to back picks. Both these drafts so far have been pretty crazy. Retired players here, uh, so nobody on our team. We'll take a look and see if anyone of relevance. Yager's finally retiring. I thought he would have last year. Cullen, Giant, uh, Cronwall, Franz, and really uh, nobody too crazy. So uh, we'll get to the draft now. Actually, we'll show the awards first. Um, hopefully next year can finally win that cup. And as you guys can see here, I would have never guessed this. Somehow the Ottawa Senators are your Stanley Cup champions for 2019. Um, like, talk about starting from the bottom to how you're here. They went from losing the first overall pick, or not losing, but winning it, and having another team get that pick and not getting Dallin to winning the Stanley Cup. I have no idea. If that happens in real life, like, I don't, I just have no idea how that could happen. Uh, President's Trophy there, Pittsburgh. Um, they actually beat the Vegas Golden Knights, a team that beat us. Imagine Vegas Ottawa 2019 Stanley Cup final. That would just be insane. Uh, so Stamkos here with the Art Ross and the Hart. Barry actually with the James Norris. Stamkos, Lady Bing. Casey Middlestat with the Calder. Uh, Craig Anderson with the Con Smythe. So I guess he went God mode. Um, I honestly probably would have traded him. He's getting old. Uh, Gibson though with the Vesna. So that's really good to see. He needs a new contract now though. Uh, we are going to be so close to the cap. I don't know how this is going to work. He also got the William M. Jennings. He wants to get paid. Uh, Connor Murphy there, Bill Masterson, Stolt with the Selkie, uh, Stamkos, Ted Lindsay, and Marisha Shard. So Stamkos cleaned up, and uh, I I still can't believe that. Senators with the Stanley Cup, Chicago with the first overall pick. Like, what is going on here? Uh, who did they beat? So they beat Boston, they swept. They beat Tampa in the semis. Carolina there in a best of seven. Uh, Vegas beat Winnipeg there to move on to the Stanley Cup final. So Winnipeg's been really close back-to-back -back years. Did they win it last year, actually? Yeah, I think they beat Tampa Bay, my bad. Uh, we'll take a quick look here too at our team just to see who performed in the playoffs. Uh, Fowler there almost a point per game, 86 now. Uh, Steele there at 9, that's actually really good. For a fourth liner, he was killing it. Uh, plus 2 as well, Like looks like one of the only plus players. Uh, Dadnov did well, I mean our team actually looks to have performed pretty well in the playoffs for whatever reason, just you know, couldn't get it done. Where's Perry though? 3 points. He is an 84 now though, that's good, he bounced back. What about Kessler, did he bounce back? Uh, he's an 84 still, but I mean, at least Perry got some overall back. Makes his contract not so bad. Just got this off from the Rangers. They won our 88th pick for 98 and 129. I really don't know who's going to be available, so might as well just take, you know, a couple more shots at it. Uh, Cousins there, medium elite potential. Got drafted 17th by the Stars. That's insane. I actually boosted him up to medium elite because he's supposed to go top 5 in 2019. Like, pretty much for sure top 5. Uh, Jack Hughes here, so we got drafted first overall. Still a 76. He didn't gain any overall, so that's kind of interesting. Um, high elite potential. This Hamus guy, though, 80 overall out of the draft. 
medium elite for Buffalo. And then Cope here, 77 out of the draft, medium elite. So, I mean, Buffalo's going to be scary. Uh, Kako there went to Arizona. So, he also didn't gain overall. So strange. Uh, medium elite. Caulfield, Detroit got him at 5, top 6. So, um, I mean, Detroit really messed up. Nolan Foote there, high top 6. Uh, Schrader, Coleman there. Uh, let's see. So, somehow... I have no idea how. Cousins fell to 17 to the Dallas Stars. I should have watched that first round, known he was still available, and made a play. Um, Doc here, Datch, he's got high top six. Byram as well, uh, immediately potential. I boosted him up. He's supposed to be like the number two pick behind Jack Hughes. 49 overall to the draft, so I mean, I don't know. I thought he'd like maybe gain some rating, but for whatever reason, the juniors, even though it's two years out of the draft, whatever they're rated in game is what they're rated when they get drafted, which really messes it up, as obviously they're going to gain overall playing two years of juniors. Hopefully they've found a way to fix that in like, you know, future games. But still, he's got medium elite potential. He's going to get good. Um, Leighton in there, I guess is how you say his name. Medium elite goalie. So, I mean, pretty crazy first round. Krebs there, high top six. De Kaiser, medium elite. I think he's uh, made in the game. Teg Bertuzzi, medium top six. Had to make sure to boost him. This guy here, medium elite. He also went late in the first round. As you can see, Buffalo just got a low elite with their fourth pick in the fourth round. So, they're killing it this draft. Back-to-back -back medium elites, one's an 80 in the draft, so he's going to be like a low 80, possibly mid-80 by the time the season rolls around. The other guy was like a 77, plus they have middle stat, like, scary how good they're going to be. Um, Xavier Parent here, highly potential. I don't believe he's that good, um, as he's like a real player, but I think he's decent, especially for the fourth round, so uh, we'll take him. And he's got, oh, uh, he's got low top six. So yeah, that's pretty decent for a fourth round pick. Our next pick, guys, is a late fourth round pick. Here we go with Munro, exact top six, even if it's low top six. Uh, for the end of the fourth round, yeah, like, that's still really good value. Our next pick here, guys, is the beginning of the fifth round, and this Alexandrov guy, high top nine forward, 10 teams interested. Um, might as well take a shot on him, and medium bottom six. Next pick here, guys, in the sixth round, I'm gonna try this D Brown dude, maybe he's, like, the next Dustin Brown. High top six, and he's actually got low top nine, but, I mean, that's not too bad. Next pick here at the end of the sixth round, I feel like we should take a shot on a goalie. You never know. We'll go with Markstrom, I guess. And medium backup. All right, that's could be better. All right, guys, we're now at the resign phase here. As you can see, we actually have 18 and a half million in cap space. I forgot about some guys whose contracts were ending. Uh, one of them is actually Henrique, down from an 83 to an 81. Um, I mean, I don't know how much money he'd want. Probably too much. Yeah, three and a half million. Sam Steele's down 81, getting better. He'll be the third line center. We can definitely get a decent fourth line center for much cheaper. So just gonna have to let Henrique go. Uh, I think all the rest of our centers are all locked up, which is good to see. Uh, left wingers here, so Kemp, we only had that on one-year deal. What's he want now? 2.9. He's an 81, so we actually dropped an overall. Could qualify him for 2.5. Uh, Nick Ritchie hasn't really grown much at all. Still wants, like, the one-year. We'll give him one at 1 1.2. He's a solid fourth-line winger. All the other guys here are just AHL players that have qualified. Uh, right wingers here, so Silverberg needs a new contract. We'd like to keep him. He doesn't want an extension, though. 4.2 for three years. Um, really doesn't get much cheaper at all, so... I don't know. I think we have the money, actually, because we have more than I thought we would. Uh, Jarmelson, I'd like to keep around as well. He wants 4.4 for four years. That's actually pretty fair. Three years. What about three years at 4.4? For 32-year-old, 83 overall defenseman. I think that's, you know, a good deal for him. Uh, Montour here, what's he want? Four years as well. Um, okay, so we could do, we can do that. Um, let's try, like, 4x4 four four for Montour, because he's younger. Maybe he'll give us, you know, that you know, benefit of the doubt, a bit of a cheaper contract. Everyone else there is locked up. Gibson wants a lot of money. We have about 10 million, I guess, uh, if we get both those defensemen back. We'd like to keep Silverberg as well. Maybe we can't keep Silverberg. We can keep Kemp, though. Um, obviously, Silverberg's better than Kemp, so let's see here. Seven by... I'd give him eight, honestly. Where is he cheapest, though? Um, so cheapest at seven years. Let's do seven by seven. I think, honestly, for a 91 overall goalie, I just realized how high rate he is now. More than fair. Um, Miller does not want an extension. And, I mean, Gibson's going to play most of the games anyway, so we could probably find a backup for cheap. Uh, Godla's a 72. Hallinan, though, is a 71. So we'll let um, Godla go there. So we have about 3 million, I guess, to get Silverberg. I don't know if that's actually going to work out. Might actually lose him to free agency here, which sucks. Um, I guess we'll give him the offer, though. We'll give him, like, 4 million. Or 4 million, though, for an 82. That's that's pretty expensive, honestly. It's a bit too much. So you know what? We'll uh, we'll try and keep Kemp, I guess. Debrinket or Steel will fill in for Silverberg. 
and uh, Kemp here. We'll just qualify for now and uh, see if that works out. So Gibson accepted our offer. That's awesome. We needed our starting goaltender back. Same with Richie. I thought we might not have given enough to. Uh, Jarmelson though rejected our offer. All right, guys. So I just simmed a free agency and look at this free agent class. Blake Wheeler's available, 90 overall. Imagine him on that first line with Getzlav and Tadnov or even Raquel. Like, that is going to be sick. McDonough's also available. He'd be a big upgrade on Jarmelson. He only wants one and a half million more, plus he's three overall higher. Like, that's crazy. I'm really glad now I didn't resign Jarmelson or Silverberg because it looks like our money can be spent much better. Uh, we also still need a backup goalie, though, to replace Miller. So, I'm thinking we might as well make an offer on Wheeler. Like, why not? Uh, we finished first in the league or basically first last year. Uh, 7.75 for three years. Um, four years until he's 36. I mean, maybe we can get him better then. Uh, we'll add the extra year onto it, I guess. Uh, until he's 36. He's still got a leap potential. Maybe he'll say yes. Like, that would be a huge add. If he doesn't say yes, I'd also go with McDonough. I'm wondering if I should make offers on both and, you know, not risk losing out on either of them. Patrick would also be really nice to get. Um, Marner 2 is here, which is insane. Um, he's an RFA, though, so we'd have to give up a first round pick. And we simply do not have the assets. Um, yeah, we can't even make it. So, I mean, we could try and trade for him. Couture is also available, but I think our center depth is fine. Broussard, uh, Gardner's there too. Like, so many good free agents available. This is crazy. Strawman, like, there's a lot of options here. So, I think I'm going to make an offer on the big fish there and Wheeler, as well as McDonough. The thing is, if McDonough accepts first, I mean, are we that mad? Probably not. Like, McDonough, Fowler, Lindholm, Manson, Montour, and Larson's our decor. Like, who cares at that point? Um, I'll just give him an offer here, like six million for three years. Um, see what he says. So uh, we'll also see if there's any good uh, high potential prospects. So I sorted by potential. For some reason, Cole Lind and Matthew Strom both did not get uh, resigned by their team. So if we could get both of them, that'd be pretty amazing. Just probably use them for a trade, but why not? Also, guys, I just checked goalies and look at this. But Broski's available, 30 years old, still 93 overall, asking for 7.9. So I mean, Gibson's two overall below him, but he's younger, still has potential. Could pass him. I don't mind, you know, keeping Gibson. I can't believe uh, Columbus let Bobrovsky go. I guess they're just going to roll with Corpy Salo. And then also, too, Talbot's available. So, I mean, this free agent year was just crazy. And like I mentioned before, we need a backup. So, I'm uh, going to make an offer here on Andrews Nielsen. Uh, should be, you know, a solid backup here behind Gibson. Doesn't need to play that much. Uh, one and a half million there for two years. 81 overall. Uh, he's going to play like 10 games. So, it really doesn't matter. Just heard back from Matthew Strom. He rejected our offer and went the Vegas Gold Knights instead. Uh, same with Cole Lynn going with the Rangers. We offered them the max contract, so really nothing we could do. I guess, you know, they thought we had too many prospects like them or something already. Nielsen also rejected our offer going with the Vegas Gold Knights as well. Uh, said we didn't offer him enough money. I mean, none of those guys I'm really too worried about. It's Blake Wheeler, Ryan McDonough. I'm waiting to hear back from one of those two guys. And as you can see, Blake Wheeler accepted our offer. There we go. The number one free agent. That makes our team so good. And then McDonough there, decide to sign with your team, no longer have the cap space. Yeah, sorry about that, Ryan. Uh, that's amazing. Right here, guys, the offer making an affiliate for Sandheim. Uh, Jacob Larson here, 22, 77 overall, low elite. He actually lost one rating from last year. Same goes for Case, 77 now, making 1.2, rather just clear that cap. Grabowski, one of our three fringe starter goalies. The value's on our side, they don't want Sandheim. We'll see what they say. And trades accepted, so that's really good. Uh, that makes our defense better. We also, you know, cleared some cap. And I was waiting until the end of the summer, guys, to sign Sandheim. As you can see here, Vegas made him a qualifying offer. Vegas has been so annoying. They knocked me out of the playoffs. They got Matthew Strom from us. Then they got, uh, who was it? They got somebody else from us, another free agent. Now they're making an offer on Sandheim. So, uh, I mean, I guess I got a clear cap, only option. So right now, guys, I'm offering Ottawa Andrew Cogliano for a third-round pick. He's actually dropped in overall. He's now an 80, and I didn't even realize he's making 3.2. So I like him, but... It's a bit expensive. Uh, we'll see if we get a third round pick back for him, and we do, so that's solid. Also, wanted to show you guys this. As I was looking at Ottawa, I mean, Craig Anderson won the Conn Smythe, now an 89 overall. How he went from like an 82 to an 89 between the ages of 37 and 38, no idea, but I thought that was hilarious. So I decided to wait until the start of the season to sign a goalie, and it actually worked out really well for us. Howard and Miller were the two best backups available, and they've both dropped their price by like 50% because no one's uh, gave them an offer. So I'm going to go with Howard here since Miller didn't want to stay with us. Plus, he's one overall higher, much younger. Um, we'll offer him like 1.4. If no one, I don't think anyone else is going to give him an offer. So that's a very good price for an 82. Like, that's cheaper than they were going at the beginning of the offseason. And other than that, I think we're pretty much set. 
team should be pretty solid. So it's the start of the season now, guys. Hopefully, third time's a charm here. We finally win the Stanley Cup. As you can see, we're actually considered a champion team now, opposed to a contender. Um, is this team better than the last two? I'm not sure. You can be the judge. First line here, we have Dadnov, Getzlav, and Wheeler. Second line's Perry, Raquel, and Debrinkat. Third there is Kemp, Kessler, and Steele. Fourth is Kajula, Kurdile, and Richie. So, I mean, still a lot of good forward depth. Defense here, we have Lindholm, Fowler, Montour, Sanheim, Weatherspoon, and Manson. So, again, lots of D depth. And then in goal, we have Gibson starting with Howard backing him up. So, I mean, this might be the best team we've had yet. Um, it's a good young team. There are players that can grow, like Debrinkat and Steele should hopefully be growing in even better players. Maybe Steele will take Perry's spot in the second line. Uh, we'll see, I guess, as the season goes. But home for good things. And obviously, we don't want to stay in the cup. We have to quick sell a 100k pack. So right now, we're in January, guys. And Boston just offered me DeBrusque for Monroe in a second round pick in 2020. Now, I can't use him this year as um, it's past December 10th or whenever when you can sign a guy. But could just do this deal in good faith for like the next GM. Uh, Monroe here, fourth round pick, low top six, 2020 second. Uh, we're not going to be drafting in 2020 anyways. Uh, we'll still have five picks there. So yeah, I'm going I'm to say yes to this deal. And I'm going to give my future GM something to work with. Also, as you guys can see there, pretty good so far. 28-13 uh, and 13 record. And we're now at the trade deadline, guys, with a record of 40-19-4. and 4, So 84 points the day before the trade deadline. I think we had around this record last year. So, you know, should be okay for the... I'm not going to say it, but the P word, you know, we should be okay for that. Uh, currently second place in the Pacific. We're actually one point behind Vancouver, who's finally turned it around. Uh, Raquel, their lean scorer, 46 points in 63 games. So we don't have too much salary cap space to work with, as has been the case for the past couple seasons. But we'll see if we can maybe make a trade or two and just boost our team a bit more. All right, guys, so I've seen that Colorado had Yakupov on the trading block. Pretty solid player, uh, 26 years old, 82 overall, really fast. Nice shot, pretty good hands. It'll be a solid addition to the third line. Offering them parent here. Uh, really low rated, but he's got low top six. Kajula, who basically Yakupov's taking the spot of, and then a seventh round pick. Hopefully that's enough. I think the, the value's a little on our side. They don't want Yakupov, he's on the block. We'll see what they say. Trade accepted, that's an awesome trade. And right now, guys, trying to get Ryan Polak from the Islanders. He's actually uh, 25 years old now, 80 overall only. Low top 4D potential, he'd be a solid addition to the bottom pair. Uh, so I'm giving them Weatherspoon, our current sixth defenseman, with Tan. He's one of the three, like, fringe starter goalies we drafted. They actually have, like, a decent amount of value, so... Uh, I'll see what the Islanders say. The value is on our side. Trade rejected. Okay, I kind of figured that. So I just add Moran to the deal as well. He's a decent prospect. Maybe now the Islanders will say yes. And they do. So that's a big addition. Definitely helps out the D. So after those trades at the deadline, here's a look at the team. Uh, first line's the same. The second line's actually Steele, Raquel, and Debrinkat now. Third line is Yakupov, Kessler, and Perry, who's now down to an 82. Uh, if I was still the GM, I'd probably buy him out next year. He's only going to have one year left at 8.6. And He's not going the right direction. Uh, Richie, Curdile, and Kemp is the fourth line. And then D there looks a lot better now with Lindholm, Fowler, Montour, Sanheim, and then Polak, and Manson, of course. Still look at our starting goaltender there in Gibson. So, team is good. They're still a champion team. Uh, we'll keep simming here, and hopefully, you know, we have some luck in the playoffs. So, it's the end of the final season. We finished with a very good record, 52-26-4. and four. Uh, So, 108 points. AHL team also did really well. And as you can see here, we just kind of crushed it since the deadline. I mean... Our team is stacked all throughout. We just got to hope, basically, uh, it goes well in the playoffs. So we actually, wow, tied Vancouver for points 108, but they beat us out for the division, just like the President's Trophy last year. That's unfortunate. Um, so I guess we'll take a look here at the scoring leaders. Raquel, they're only 57 points. So I guess, you know, we're a team by committee. Um, I'm surprised, like, Wheeler didn't have more points than that. Only 55 as an 89 overall. I expected more than that. Uh, Dabrinkat, though, 53. Fowler, 53. So he's really crushing it. Dadnov 52, Getzlev 48. So yeah, like we had a bunch of guys around 50 points, which is good to see. Yakupov 45, Kessler even still not doing too bad there for third line center. Um, yeah, like Steel 30. So yeah, definitely we're a team by committee, so maybe that'll work. You know, bunch of guys carrying their weight. Gibson obviously is a beast. 0.93 save percentage there, 2.09 goals against. I'll take a look here at the entire league. Didn't mean to do that for goalies. Craig Anderson somehow has the most wins again. Are you kidding me? Uh, leading scorers though, Carlson, 111 points as a D-man. Wow, that's insane. Stamkos, Shifley, Line, Malkin, Kucherov, Colin White, putting up tons of points. Uh, Stone there, so Ottawa's just resurged, I guess. Besser, Burns, Crosby, Shen. Uh, that's kind of crazy. And as you can see here, we actually finished fourth place in the entire league. Ottawa centers there winning the President's Trophy, 119 points. I have no idea. Like, imagine if they actually got down with the first overall pick. Um, and like pushed their 2019 pick to Colorado instead, which, like I said, with what's going to happen in real life, that's what should be happening in the game. 
that's just ridiculous. I I don't know what happened in there. I mean, that's why I love franchise mode because literally anything can happen apparently. So hopefully what happens in these playoffs is we win the Stanley Cup. And as you guys can see here, again, we're playing the Vegas Golden Knights in the playoffs. This time we're meeting them in the first round. So Oscar Lindbergh there is their second line center. That looks like a hole. Hopefully our team can exploit that. Uh, they added Komarov there on the fourth line. Um, defense is still like, you know, a solid D without a true number one D-man. And then in goal, they have Fleury, who's now an 84. Uh, he's definitely, you know, age is caught up to my guess at this point. And we have Gibson, who's now a 91. So the goalie matchup is definitely more in our favor than it was before. Um, hopefully here we can get some revenge for last season. Um, let's see what we can do here. 1-1. Uh, 2-1 one, one for us. 2-2. Two, two, come on. Come on. There we go. 3-2. Uh, we just got to win one of the next two games. There we go. So beat them in six. Playing the Canucks now. Um, like this. Right here's look at the Canucks lineup. They got Barchi, Peterson, and Besser on the first line. Peterson's an 88. And look, why is his neck so long? That's so weird. Um, Horvat, Stepniak, and Erickson. I mean, they got pretty solid forward group. But I mean, they have 570s. So I like ours better. Defense, kind of like Vegas. Not really a true number one. Yulevi is the closest thing. But he's on the second pair. And then in goal here, Thatcher Demko's an 85. So again, Gibson is better. I think like they'd be more scared of our team than we should be scared of them. Hopefully we can win another series. So we're going to start the simulation now. Hopefully we can get past them. Uh, it's 1-1 one, one there after 2. Uh, we're just going to continue there. Down 2-1, down 3-1. Are you kidding me? Down 4-1. We lose to the Canucks in 5 games. You suck! I thought I built the Anaheim Ducks, you know, the best team they've had in years, in 3 consecutive years, and somehow missed the playoffs in the first year and then get bounced in the playoffs in the semifinals in back-to-back -back years. I apologize, Anaheim fans. I did everything I could, unfortunately. It wasn't good enough. And the Stanley Cup champions for 2020 were the Winnipeg Jets. They won it in two of three years. Uh, that team is honestly just too stacked. As it turns out, the New Jersey Devils have won the lottery yet again, so they'll be getting Alexis Lafreniere with the first overall pick. Detroit, though, at number two. Uh, we could get Quentin Bayfield, would not mind that at all. So uh, I guess, you know, there is some, like, you know, sh light at the end of the tunnel or whatever. Uh, retired players there, nobody. So uh, I'll go qu open up that 100k pack and quick sell it. I still can't believe how unlucky we were. So here you go, guys. Have to quick sell this 100k blockbuster pack. Uh, 20 gold rare players. Uh, and then we're just going to skip this one. Uh, so off the bat here, we got the Matt Frat. And I don't even think you can use him because the set's gone. Dry Saddle Nylander. We'll see if we get any Anaheim Ducks, maybe. The players that let me down. Uh, the trade deadline collectibles we could use to possibly turn to a player. Tyler Sagan's pretty awesome. Um, unfortunately, it's the cold base, though. Uh, wow, Daryl Sittler, legend card, not bad. Uh, let's see, there's Cam Fowler. I mean, he had a pretty good run for us, gold collectible, and that's about it. So, um, I just realized why am I worrying about, like, what a player's worth and stuff when I have to quick sell all this. So, uh, there we go, some good stuff there. Unfortunately, uh, we busted, so bust in this pack as well. And that is it, guys, for the first episode of 2020 Cup or Bust. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, Please leave that thumbs up. If you have any suggestions at all, make sure you leave them in the comments section. And stay tuned for the next episode, which will be the Arizona Coyotes. That one's going to be interesting. Uh, we'll see if we can pull it off. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a nice day. Goodbye.